Yeah. Hey, bitch, I'm in the league. You a fan of a team. Okay. And while you hate, I be hunting for the green. Uh -huh. You just chase your screen. Yeah, you go chase a meme. What? More space for me yeah. in the still of all you please. <laughs> I'ma blow the scene, new diamonds on my teeth, let the pearlies up on me, join us Hello friendly listener, you are now tuned in to the Rambling Rogue Show. I am your host, Rambling Rogue, aka Jires Rogue. Thank you again for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome. You know what I'm saying? This is a weekly podcast where, let me just remind you guys, I just like to kind of get off everything that's on my chest that I've kind of built up over the week. I'm an artist, I am a content creator, your host, I am, I am, yeah, your host, I am trying to be so many things, so this podcast, yeah, just kind of helps me get my thoughts out inside of a kind of brash and kind of, I guess, you know, random and sporadic way, but it also kind of helps me, if you really would like to know, it actually kind of helps me develop and cultivate my uh, speaking abilities and my projecting abilities and my abilities to actually hold a conversation and things like that. So, I mean, now that I actually think about it, it's funny that basically talking to myself is helping me become more of a social person, but it is. And that's what this show is. It's just me talking to myself, but with you listening to it under that guy. So I've had a pretty eventful week, listener, pretty damn eventful. I hope your week was great as well. You know what I'm saying? It's March 17th, Saturday. It's a beautiful Saturday. It's actually been a kind of shit week as far as the weather goes. I mean, the top of my week from like Monday to about, you know, Wednesday, it was just, it was just rainy out here where I live. I live in Southern California. It was just, you know, rainy and, 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 you know, off and on type of rain. It wasn't even like a constant downpour. It was like, it was like rain that makes you sad because at times the sun would peek out and you'd get happy, but then it would just like kill your mood and it would just start drizzling again. And it would just give you that very glum and very just somber feeling, at least for me. Like, I don't know. Sometimes the rain can have like a, an effect where it's like, I'm so glad it's raining and I'm, and I'm glad to be out in it. But other times it's like, man, I really just, actually most times actually now that I'm finding as I get older, I'm finding that I'm just enjoying the sun more. I'm enjoying sunlight. I'm enjoying just the energy that comes under sunlight. I'm enjoying the feelings that I get when I walk outside and I'm, and I'm greeted by just nature and shit. I'm just, en I'm enjoying. Um, but I guess, you know, in LA where I was, basically for the past couple days that's kind of what made my week so eventful it was a it was it was like what i'm talking about but amplified you know where you can see the sun in the city when it shines through it it shines through man that's sunny california sun and and you can actually witness some just off the wall totally ridiculous things with the sun you know shining but when that sun goes away and when it's blocked, total glum. It seems like everything has that blue filter. I mean, if you've ever been in like a city, so like a, a metropolis, you know, like a, a bustling city. When that angle of buildings just starts to block out all of those UV rays and you start to notice just how dark everything is and just how, I guess flat everything is you start to just appreciate the sun more and what it can do i mean even in me making content you know i'm appreciative of the sun because my room the way it's set up is that the sun actually shines through this large paneled window that i actually have that's right over my bed and it provides great lighting like even now if you're tuning in and you're watching what i hope what i hope listener will be the first video of the rambling rogue show if you're tuning in and watching me live or not live but you know watching me um yeah you'll see that this lighting is great and it's all the sun so it's like i'm just starting to to be more appreciative of that and back to la so i headed out to the city and for me that's actually about an hour an hour and a half for me like whether i drive or whether i take pu public transit 
So, of course, I could have dr driven because I do have a car. My Toyota Camry. Linda. Shout out to Linda. Um, Linda EP coming for you guys. But uh, I love the thought and idea of a good journey, listener. I do. You know, I'm the kind of guy that'll, I mean, call me corny or whatever. I'll, I'll literally walk down the street or if I'm driving somewhere and, you know, I know exactly where I'm going. I'll take the scenic route. I'll take the scenic route. If I could take the, the freeway and it'll get me there in, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Sometimes I like to take the scenic route. It takes me 30 minutes, but I like to pass around buildings. I like to see stuff. I like to just kind of let my window down and kind of just like inhale the air. Like, you know, just you don't like to just let things move too fast by you. You know, I mean, you got to appreciate that the journey, the j shout out to Nigel, that the journey is, is, is something to actually withhold as well. You know, it's like you could get inspiration from anything, anything on your, uh, on your, on your way to, on, on your way to, to your dreams or to your destination. So it's just like, appreciate that more listener. Try to take the time out to actually look around you when you're doing some menial things like, I don't know, waiting for, waiting in line for something. Or if you're, especially if you're outside, you know, if you can see the street, start looking at the people around. Start looking, you know, like turn your exploring, turn the exploring part of your mind on, you know. If you limit yourself and you're content with what you see, and you find that you're not trying to get out of your own box, at least for me, I found that that just makes life very boring. And you know, that, that starts to make my mind feel very idle. Keep your mind busy by trying to always look at people and things and think why and think how and think what's going on, you know? Engage inside of the world that surrounds you when you get out into the world. There's a lot of people that stay stuck in their heads and you see that a lot too in the city. You know, they're so stuck in there of course, they probably got something important to get to. They've got something important to do. Nadja, you're on video right now. Well, actually, no, you're not. You're not in the shot, but you did just pass the shot. Um, you can get into the shot if you want to, though. But, uh, you know, just, just you'll take a look at these people. And they're so stuck inside of themselves. I feel personally just, just distraught at that. Because, and this isn't even an age thing. It'll be people, it'll be young people and old people alike. You know, some of them. They have the energy where it's just they're totally inside. They're hermited to themselves and they're, they've got tunnel vision, you know, and that can be very scary to me because it's like you're out in this world. You shouldn't be so focused. You shouldn't be so inside. You should be ready and willing to 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 accept. At least that's my opinion. That's my opinion. You know, I mean, at least on um, if, if you ask me you know, how, how you could see things differently and maybe even be a happier person or maybe even be a person that, that has like, you know, if, if you ever wanted to become a person that, that wanted to, to develop, I guess, a worldly view, stop, get out of that tunnel vision, you know, get out of that tunnel, you know, I took a trip to, uh, the broad in LA, very popular museum. They've got a, uh, I think it's a new, uh, uh, actually like exhibit that I wasn't able to actually see. It's on the first floor and they had advertisements all over for it. But, um, I got to witness some very, very moving contemporary art. I got to see some of the Basquiat's that they, or all the Basquiat's that they had in there. And I got to see some of, you know, just the sculptures and different weird little trinkets and things that artists make, you know, and it just got my mind to wondering and thinking. So much of the stuff in there is, is like, I don't want to say it's not art, but it's just, it's so art that, you know, it's so many people just saying that they can't, they can't, or they're not as avant-garde or they're not as, you know, prestige or they're not as so many different, you know, high class adjectives when people describe art, they're just themselves. And, and, and it's a lot of that. It's a lot of that feeling of. I really just broke through and did what I felt like I should do. That's what, that's what a lot of the art in there made me feel like. 
it was a very interesting um walkthrough you know i took a lot of pictures there's a few pieces that really stuck me um that really stuck me that that really struck me i should say there was this one piece i took a picture of i, I hope i took a picture of the artist's name but i took a picture of this just this graphic image there was this piece it was like a uh, kind of a mural that was along this wall that kind of if you've ever played skyrim um, for my gamers out there, if you've ever played Skyrim, if you've ever gone up to like a Dragonstone, you know, when the, 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 um, you know, Dragonstone has like the new word of power or whatever, and you can like go up to it. It was kind of like a piece where it was a wall that was like a, you know, kind of a crest shape and on it, it was sort of the stages of man and man, it was, it was so graphic in that. It was just showing these brutal images of, and it was like a silhouetted black and white image. So it was like, you can make out that it's a human, but you can't quite make out any like specific features or anything like that. So it's like a silhouette, black silhouette image. And it's like, you know, a woman being raped from front and back, but it's like the things that she's being raped by, you could represent as the world and all these different things. And it was like, that shit was fucking me up. I took a couple pictures with my Canon, shout out to my Canon. Uh... The broad man it was it was it was an interesting experience in there very interesting experience i will be posting up these pictures that i'm talking about actually in some format i'm not quite sure exactly how but i'm working on it guys um so after i left the broad it was about 2 p.m it's thursday the reason why i went there let me explain that first the reason why i went there if you forgot um from crush chronicles the reason why I went there was because that's what I invited the girl that I made a video for too. So the whole, you know, Italian video with the, uh, you know, the, uh, and we're back. Woo. Sorry for that. Um, my uncle came over to my house and totally ruined my train of thought. I'm about to go chief with him as well. Catch that on dreadlock journey. Anyway. Yeah, man. W that was what I invited that girl to shout out to the movie store chick her name will not be mentioned here rude as hell but uh <laughs> yeah I, I enjoyed myself anyway you know what I'm saying so after I left the broad I believe that's where I was at hopefully that's where I was at I begin walking and traveling I get onto the bus and I head towards on some shit the store that's ran and owned by Adam 22 and the whole no jumper gang all of that I start heading towards Melrose and I kind of get off the bus like to where I, I don't know how to explain it but I'm on the top of Melrose if that makes sense so like I'm at I don't even remember what street I was dropped off at but it was probably maybe I don't know 20 minutes of a walk down the street on Melrose to Adam 22's place. So, you know, I kind of got some scenery. I wasn't dropped exactly there. I mean, I was dropped about maybe 10 minutes away from even that point, but caught a lot of that gritty LA vibe, man. It's and and and, and a lot of that personality too. When you walk by all of these nice small pueblo like houses with all this beautiful color and all of these flowers and not even just flowers but sometimes murals and not even murals sometimes it's just graffiti sometimes it's just gang culture that's just kind of you could kind of still see seep out and reach out at you sometimes you see it in the people man you see it in just walking you know i was walking down uh i was walking near a school that's like maybe 10 minutes away from Melrose. It was like an elementary school, kind of middle schoolish kind of thing. Kids were wearing uniforms or something like that. It was a very Hispanic area. And uh, the sun was shining on me. I was walking in the direction of the sun. And man, I just, I felt so grounded and rooted into the city. I just felt like I could, like I could, I don't know, like, like I could just fall into a movie right now. Like I could be in, in a movie scene. Like it, it was very picturesque. The whole entire city, you know, and again, I keep describing this feeling of it being alive to people. And it is, you know, I'm walking down Melrose after trying to get into two dispensaries because my freaking wreck expired. And I keep trying to fool these people out here where I live in Southern California. It's about two hours away from L.A., right? This is the sticks. Nobody gives a fuck about a fucking expired wreck. Nobody cares about any of that shit they're just trying to get your money right so 
The dispensaries out here, they'll let you ride in. They won't check much. It's very, it's grossly, uh, you know, underregulated. All the shit out here. It's grossly uh, uh, done. It's grossly. There's a word I'm looking for, but it's 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 a gross, uh, I guess, use of or interpretation of this whole medical thing because it's like no medical help is actually happening here it's just people getting customers out out here but uh in la oh these motherfuckers are serious these motherfuckers are serious man every single uh 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 person that i'd meet at a window would check my wreck and they'd unfold it and they the first thing they'd look at was the damn date now granted that day i was wearing a trench coat i you know, was looking a little bit suspicious because I, I could tell because the trench coat that I have, it's very long. It's very frockish. Um, people out here, they're just not on that wave yet. I don't know if they'll ever be, but they're just not on that wave. And, you know, with the summer coming on, you know, with spring coming on, people are just even more just like not even wanting to see or just not used to seeing, I guess, you know, like, like longer or colder wear, even in California. I don't know. I, I don't know if that's a weird thing to explain, but it's like, you bring more suspicion to yourself if you wear a jacket in spring where versus, you know, if you wear, you know, like like a tee in spring because it's like, why are you wearing a jacket? It's kind of a hot day outside. And even if it's not hot right now, you know it could be hot because Cali. But anyway, two dispensaries, let you know, just shut me down. I'm walking down Melrose. I'm enjoying the sounds of the city because, again, I don't even like to, to put earphones in while I'm walking in L.A., now in my city, Rialto, we can we I could put earphones in and I could walk through because at least to me, I've been walking through these streets and it's just there's just nothing happening, you know? It's and, and it's like it there's just not much sound that's different. But I'm walking down the streets of LA and all of a sudden now tell me if I'm crazy here, listener. I want the listener to tell me if I'm crazy. If you listen into this, let me know. Am I a wild man? Am I a crazy person? I literally see a car pull up. It's a BMW. You know what I'm saying? He's bumping music, the guy in the car. He's freestyling to the music. I He's in a coupe, and it's a top-down. I compliment dude. I say, hey, man, I like your attitude. I like that you're freestyling. Keep it up. If homie pulls over and says, do you want to ride? Do you, A, get in the car and see where this takes you? Or B, leave. Keep walking. Mind you, I'm on my way to the OSS store. Don't have much to do. I mean, that is a destination, but I'm really, again, like I said earlier, enjoying the journey. Did I say that earlier? Well, I, I don't know if I said that earlier, but I'm, again, just enjoying the journey of everything. So, yeah. I say, yeah, I get into the car, man. I tell him the direction I'm going because he was going in the direction I was going. He tells me where he's going, and I say, fuck it, let's go to where you're going. Turns out he's an actor who's aspiring, like many people, I'm sure, in L.A. He's some extra actor who's, you know, putting in the work day in, day out. He came from Minnesota, this guy, and his name, if I could actually get it, hold on, for the, actually the people on video, I'm going to get his card out, but I'm going to say his name in a second. Just give me one second. I can't find his card, so I'm going to do him a little bit of a disservice. That sucks. But Keenan Gerald Bruce, one of the nicest souls in L.A., you know? And you may think it's weird that I got into a car with a stranger, but I think you got to take that leap of faith sometimes, and I think that, like, you kind of just got to see it like this. Okay. You know what I'm saying? This could be anything. You got to have free energy. See, I, I looked at the car. I looked at the dude. I felt his energy. I could feel the person he was. I could feel it. And I just was like, man, let me take a leap of faith. So he ends up taking me to this bar slash, you know, restaurant place. He's meeting his acting coach who trained him and basically got him to come out here to L.A. to try and, you know, strive and follow his dreams and whatnot. I met up with a bunch of. 20 to 30 somethings who just are trying to make it man 
every single day rejection people not liking them people judging them they have to go onto the cutting board every day to be viewed watched dissected and fucking cut open same thing but you get what i'm trying to say it's like they're on the frontier of it and these people were for better or worse pretty much you know happy they 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 understood their position in the world they understood what little they had but they understood that every single day is an opportunity and it was an energy that was very inspiring for me because it's like you know these people again are not not 19 20 year olds these are 25 plus year olds 27 to 30 something year olds who are hey trying to still make it because that dream is there and the point i bring this up for is just to say your youth is in you okay it's it's unlimited and if you cultivate it you can be a type of person that either sees life as this terrible experience that we're just waiting to get over with or you can see it as this thing that opens up something new every single day and make sure its job is to actually enlighten you because that's all life is it's just it's just an enlightening experience if you go outside every single day you'll see something different every single day now if you're like me and you live in a small town while you may see something different every day it may become a little bit like the same sort of thing that you start to see and that can be that can become monotonous so break out of your comfort zone break out if that means going to a bigger city if you can do that if that means watching something that you normally wouldn't watch do that you know what i'm saying it's all about having new experiences i traveled to la the next day so that's friday yesterday as of recording this and i had a bit of a different experience when i traveled to la this time so after basically well, you know what? I'm, I'm bouncing all over the place. Let me quickly finish my first L.A. trip. I actually left that um, acting place and or, uh, the uh, restaurant where those actors were at. Went to the OSS store. It was closed. Posted a bunch of my flyers all around the store, on the floor, in the trees, on a parking meter, all over the place. But not on the actual store itself. And then dipped back home. So, next thing comes around. I have another ticket to go back out to LA and I say, fuck it, let's do it. So I'm back out there. And this time I actually try to just do more walking and experiencing. And I tried to do more of just wandering, you know? So I took my camera out and we just, I just went, I just went into downtown LA and saw what I saw. You know, it was a lot of interesting things. What I noticed was what I began to develop as I was seeing and looking was that my eye goes towards things of juxtaposition. So what that means is, is like, right? Like I, I am very much attracted in if I see two things that are like right next to each other, that damn, they just like, not only should they not be next to each other, but it's like, they are so far away from each other that it's like, wow, that's happening in a moment. Like, I love that. I love, I love that idea. I love that image i love i love what that looks like i think i caught a little bit of that and if you do watch my dreadlock journey um canon picks whatever i'll name it i don't know if it's going to be that but if you do watch that i think you'll be able to see that excuse me excuse me that that is actually what i do strive for it's it's strive to capture it's like i got this one photo of a uh, business looking guy who was in front of a, uh, a construction site, you know, it's like, wow, he's really just standing here. And he wasn't really standing, doing anything. He was just standing in front of it, you know, in the gate he was separated by, it, but it was like, wow, he's really standing here. He's not behind his desk. He's not, you know, he's just standing here. He's just, he's like, one, he's like a piece of this, but then there's the fucking junkyard. It's dirty. It's desolate. It's, it's, it has nothing going on. There's this guy, he has everything going. It's just so much. I took a picture of, I took a picture of, um, why well, I, I didn't actually, well, I didn't get to actually take a picture, but I, I love the juxtaposition of, of businessmen to, to the homeless and how you could just see both and anything in between all over LA. It's just, and, and it's just, it was just, that was, that was another thing. And 
I also captured a uh, a cop car that was behind this closed gate. I don't know if it was, you know, the most... Uh, to me, that image just stood out to me so much. It was like, that's not something you see. And not only that, it's it's something that literally goes against what you normally see. The cop car is not usually behind the cage. You know, it's like... It, it's such a challenge to 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 what you're to what to what is established does that make sense at least that's that's those are the thoughts that rang off to me when i saw it it was like it was just a cop car that was in a parking garage and the parking garage grates like the, the grates looked like bars in a cell and it was just i mean not bars in a cell i mean bars in a cell are, are uh, vertical these bars were actually horizontal but still it was just quite an image it was quite an image. It just it just brought up these feelings of of opposites and 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 <sighs> interesting stuff. At least to me. <laughs> what else do we got? Um, more juxtaposition. It's like, kind of what I'm talking about is like having a hippie. Because I'm a cashier, right? At like um, you know, at a retail job or whatever. And it's like having a straight up hippie dude come to the checkout and then, you know, he has like a tattoo on his ear of the peace sign. He has, you know, nonchalant looking clothing. He's not really, you know, trying to cause too much attention to his to himself. And then you have the veteran, an old army veteran who comes in and, and is right behind him. He has his hat on that tells you exactly his regiment. That tells you exactly what what he did, where he was. He he has pride. His stance is different. It's just everything in that scene is just so in it's, it's so it's so intriguing to me. Um, I got any other topics? My cat is now okay. Shadow the cat. She is invaded. I can't. I don't think the shot can quite get her much, but. She's very pregnant. Very, very pregnant. Uh, we did not get her spayed. A mistake. But you know what? That's just life, you know? I mean, you you lump. I don't know if I have much else for you guys, listener. I was going to bring up some non-sequitur things. Oh, you know what? I think I'll end off on this. Okay. Yeah, last, last, I think last week I was bragging about my three months. I, I don't know if I brought this up, but I'm going to bring this up now. It's a thought that I keep having. I might relapse on Xbox. I might, I might just do it. I'm going to give away my Xbox soon to my, my younger brother, my younger half brother, whose story I haven't actually explained, but, um, I'm going to be giving my younger half brother my Xbox. So... I mean, if I'm already going to do that, I feel like I could just get off a day or two and it'll be all right. You know, I do work hard. I create a lot and I'm going to be creating so much more when I give that thing up. It's finally just going to be this token of this sign of not only as a good gift for him, because I'm also going to be giving him my games and all that stuff. And um, but it's just it's, it's just kind of like a freeing thing for me because it's like. Again, I've explained on this podcast, I can put in six to 10 hours easily on my Xbox in a day. And and that's not even much like half a day is more like what we usually do. So it's like, you know, when you when you start to think about that, and I'm not even making any money off of that, and I'm just getting older, it's just it doesn't make any sense. Now, the rambling rogue brand is going to be aligned with gaming. And it definitely, I definitely will be streaming by the end of the year. So it's just, I need to do it when it's mon- and when it's proper for me and not when it's just, you know, as a hobby, you know, because I think that's the whole other thing too. If you really look at what I do and what a lot of what you, the content creators that you like do, it's just, they're taking their hobbies and they're taking the things that we all enjoy and they're just making it into something that's actually profitable. And I think that that's just kind of the frame of mind that you should have if you're going into the creating content world, you know? It's all about just taking what you like to do and just making it so that it's watchable. Look at, look at any, 
any industry, whether it's music to games to, to film to anything. It's just people that see that they, they, I don't know. I'm rambling. Anyway, pretty much that's all I wanted to say this week. I just wanted to talk about LA. I had a very much visual experience my second time around. I enjoyed it a lot. Sorry for no soundboard. I didn't put the soundboard in this episode. I had a lot to say. Um, I just, I, I didn't want it. You know, I just didn't have much nonsense. Next week, though, it's going to be a very interesting one. It's going to be a very interesting one. So if this is the first video, the second video is going to be fucking bomb. You can uh, actually take that to the bank. Real shit. Okay? So... It's the Rambling Rogue Show. Thank you for watching.